everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ask Amber and today I'm starting a really exciting new series all about Blender, specifically Blender for VR chat avatars. So if you're wondering how to make an avatar from start to finish in Blender using avatar assets, you've come to the right place. This is part one of my Blender tutorial for VR chat avatars. Let's get started. The most important thing that you need when you're starting a VR chat avatar in Blender is obviously Blender itself. I use Blender 3.0 because it works the best for me. It doesn't give me any issues and it works really well with the Cats plugin. Now, if you don't know what the Cats plugin is, I'm going to have a link to download that below. It makes making avatars in VR chat super easy and seamless and takes care of a lot of the grunt work for you. So you're not going to have to do it yourself. Things like aligning the bones in your avatar, creating visemes so that your avatar can speak, setting up eye tracking so that your avatar's eyes look around in VR chat. So definitely download it. The link is in the description. Now, the way that you add a plugin to this sidebar here in Blender is you're going to go to the edit tab and choose preferences. You're going to click this add ons button right here. Then you're going to hit install and you're going to navigate to the folder where you downloaded your cats plugin. Now it's really important that you don't unzip your cats plugin. You just take the zip file, which I already have mine installed, so I'm not going to reinstall, but let's just say that this folder right here was a zip file. You would just click on the file and then click install add on. Once that add on is installed, you can search for it using the search bar and you can see here that there's 3d view cats blender plugin. You just make sure that this is checked on and it will show up right here in your sidebar and you are good to go. You can exit this window. Now that you have your blender ready to go and you have your cats plugin installed, you can get started right away on making your model. Now, the way I like to do it is I have all of the items that I would like to add onto my model that I've downloaded from different stores, from different people's gum roads. I search Jinxie a lot. You can find a lot of really cool assets and these assets usually come with an FBX, a texture file that has the main base texture on it, and then some additional texture files that have normal maps and different things like that that you can use in Unity to give that asset a specific look or style. So what I've done is I've taken all of the FBXs that I wanna use, put it in a folder with my blend file, and then I've also created a textures folder and put all the textures from those FBXs that I wanna use in this folder. And for all of these assets that I'm going to be using today, I will link them down in the description below. So if you wanted to buy the assets and use them on your own, you're more than welcome to. This is also the time when I like to go into my textures folder and rename the textures to anything that I want them to be named so that I can tell what they are when I need to add them later. Like if something didn't click or add in Unity, I know exactly what they are. Like right here, that would be the normal map for the pants. Anything that doesn't have a specific description, like for example, these nails, I'm going to change these nails to be nails pink so that I know later that these are nails. And this way, if you were also to sell an avatar, someone who would buy your avatar may be confused if the naming isn't correct. So I really encourage you to have at least a semblance of good naming structure on all of your textures because once you add these textures to your model in Blender, you are going to want to keep them the same way so that when you import it into Unity, everything will stay linked. That way, if you have to go back to Blender after Unity, you'll be able to go back and forth without having too much of an issue. I also know a lot of people who don't add their textures on in Blender and save it all for Unity, which is a totally fine process. I just find it really hard to visualize what my avatar is going to look like in Blender before it gets to Unity if I don't have my textures added. So I like to have them all added before I take it into Unity just so that I can be sure that I like what it looks like and don't have to go back and forth from Blender to Unity a whole bunch of times. With all that being said, I'm going to import my very first piece into Blender and that is going to be my base model. Now I'm using Zimpia's Fit Base for this tutorial, but there are a lot of other bases out there. So feel free to use whatever you want. So let's go ahead and import the base for this model. 
Now there is a way to import it with cats where you can click import model right here and it will import your FBX. But I often don't use this particular button because sometimes I've gotten some glitches and some weird things that happen that I don't particularly want to deal with. I like things to be consistent. So in order for it to be consistent, I always go to file import and then I'll go down to FBX. And this will open the window where I can navigate to what file I want to import. So I would like to import the Zimpia Fitbase, but I'm simply going to click on the FBX that I want and then click import FBX. And there it is. It shows up right in my Blender file. And as you can see, it adds the FBX under our scene collection. So when I toggle down the armature, I can see in here that it comes with the thigh high socks and the base. Now I like to rename everything because I like to have things really, really clear as to what they are. And I like everything to match as far as naming organizations. So I'm not actually going to keep these thigh high socks this time, but I do want to show you a cute little thing that happens. These thigh high socks on the Zimpia base. So if you are to click the body, which is this right here, Zenfit Base. And I'm actually just going to rename this right now to say body. But one of the cool things in Blender is that you can test your blend shapes, which in Blender are called shape keys. Now it's this little green icon right here, object data properties. And when you click on that, but you can see that once I'm highlighted on the body, I can see all of the shape keys that are applied to this body. And if you look at this body, you can see that when you make the shape key go up or down, it changes the body in a certain way. So for example, this body happens to have a thigh high squish that makes these socks look normal instead of having this jagged edge right here. So when I drag my mouse over the thigh high squish or even just click it and change it to one, it's a value between zero and one, one being all the way up and zero being all the way down. And you can see now that with that value at one, that the socks make a lot more sense, which is a really cool feature that Zimpia's base comes with automatically. And we'll go into all the shape keys, how to make them, how to edit them, all the different things in a later video. But for right now, I just wanted to show you. Now I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get back to the basics. So I'm going to go ahead and delete my thigh high socks because I don't actually want them. You can right click and click delete, or you can click them and hit X on your keyboard and it will delete them. Or you can click them on this screen, click X and then click delete. So now that I have this base that I'm working with, I'm going to click on my cats tab. So when you click fix model, it basically just aligns everything and kind of finds things that may be wrong with your VR chat avatar that are maybe just a blender thing or something like that. But I like to go into this little settings button and in here you can see there's a whole bunch of things checkmarked. Now this could really mess you up because when you're editing a model in Blender, you don't want all of your meshes joined together and you want to be able to click through different meshes and edit different meshes, create materials, all those different things. So I definitely don't want to join all my meshes. So I'm going to just go ahead and unclick all of those. And honestly, for me, all I usually keep on is connect bones and fix materials. And this will just align all of the things for VR chat and everything else I turn off. You definitely don't want to leave on remove zero weight bones because if you have twist bones in your model, if you have any sort of bones that are root bones for like your hair or like an ears that you added on and you want to have a root bone for that, that root bone is not going to have any weight. So you don't want to remove the zero weight bones because then all of those bones would not be parented to your root bone. So always unclick remove zero weight bones so that you don't have that problem coming in later on. As far as rigid bodies and joints, combining same materials, I don't leave those on at all. So now that I only have connect bones and fixed materials selected, I'm just going to click OK. That'll keep my settings. So if you look in here, you can see they're kept and I'm going to click fix model. And now you can see that the model is fixed, but all of the materials have turned pink instead of gray. This just means that when you go into the material for each object, that no texture is linked. There's nothing wrong with seeing this pink here. It just means you need to link your texture. So I'm actually not going to use this brown undies, so I'm not going to worry about linking that texture right now, but I do want to link the texture for my body. So in order to do that, I'm going to work on the material for this body. And when I say material, it is the same thing as materials in Unity. So this is going to be a really important factor when you export your model into Unity and materials are the number 
one most important things that you need to keep named and organized. Otherwise, it's going to get really confusing later. And when and if you ever sell a model, your materials need to be very clear and concise as to what they are so that if somebody wanted to edit a material on your model, they know what they're editing. They know what your material links to. So I'm going to go ahead and add the Honey Labs texture that I purchased onto this body material. In order to do that, I'm going to go down to this material properties tab. There are a lot of other tabs. We'll go over them later, but right now materials tab is super important. You want your material set to principled BSDF. And when you add different things into this principled BSDF material, which I know looks intimidating if you've never used Blender before, don't worry. We're going to go over it. I'm going to have an entire video just based on materials and how to use them and how to make very easy sense of them. So don't worry that's coming. But for now, we're going to just focus on the name of the material. So this is the name of the material that is going to import into Unity. So I want to make sure that it is what I want it to be called. So I'm going to call this one skin because it is the skin of my body. Now, if you have different meshes, like if I were to join this body and the undies mesh together, see how undies has two materials linked to it. I would have one mesh called body, but it would have multiple materials listed in here. And those materials you can still edit for different parts, just like how you would in Unity. So for now, I'm going to call this skin. And in order to add the texture, this already has a base color, but because I moved around my FBXs, because I moved around my textures, this base color image is not going to show up because it doesn't know where it is in my computer. So I'm just going to click this little arrow right here, toggle this down. And right now it's base color dot png dot zero zero three, which is the name of the skin texture that was assigned to this when it was exported by Zinpia. So I'm going to go ahead and click this open image file. Then I'm going to navigate to where my textures are for this model that I saved previously that I was telling you about earlier. So I'm going to go into my textures folder and it will show all of these textures. Now I can look at this in list form. I can look at this in like a double list form, but I always look at it in this type of display mode in the gallery because I can see all of the textures and I don't have to guess by their name which one is which. So here it is my body texture. I'm just going to go ahead and either double click on that or I'm going to click on open image. And there you go. It will apply it to that material. Now, if you don't have a base color set at all, like let's say remove. So the base color will just be white. You just click on this little yellow dot and you click image texture right here because you're putting a PNG onto the material. It will turn your model to be all black texture because there's no image applied to it yet, which basically means it applied just a black image to it. So then you can open and do the same thing you did before, find the texture, double click on it, and there you go. You have your texture applied to your model. One of my favorite parts about doing all of my textures in Blender and having them ready, other than being able to see what everything looks like before I'm ready to go, is that if you use the principled BSCF surface, and you have your material named correctly and you have the correct texture set right here. When you export your FBX, importing it into Unity is a breeze because Unity will remember this image and it will automatically assign this image to your material in Unity as well. So it will remember that this image goes with this material. And as long as you have this image imported into Unity, it will automatically apply it to it. And it's one step less that you have to do in Unity when finding your textures. This is one of the most important things. Make sure that all of your textures are in the same folder. They're all named correctly so that when you apply it to your material and name your material correctly, you've already done the bulk of the work for your materials when you're importing it into Unity. So now that I have my base here, it is time to add my head. And like I said, I am not keeping these underwear. I'm just going to leave them on right now for the time being as I import my head. And once I have other clothes to put on her, I will put those clothes on and we'll go into that in a later video as well. So now that my body is all ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and do the same process of importing my head. So I am using the Amelia head. This will also be linked below. So I also made sure to add that face texture to my textures folder so that after I import the head, I can add that texture as well. So again, file, import, FBX, navigate to the folder that I want, and I'm going to go ahead and import my Amelia head right now. Now this is going to give me up here a separate armature. So now I have armature 001 and armature, and this main armature is going to be the one that I pile everything onto in the end. 
and I'm going to show you how to add this head to this body so that they're all in the same armature and that they all work together. But before we do that, we need to be able to move around the head so that it's the right position and scale for my body. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the main armature for this and I'm just going to move it into place. Now, I always use shortcut keys for Blender in order to move and scale different things. So to move something, it is the letter G on your keyboard and you can see you can just move it around after pressing G and then you just click to apply. And if you are in a viewpoint where you can see directly half on, it will only move it along that. If you are tilted a little bit and you move it, then you can see it'll move it over to the side as well. And we don't want that. So if you're going to move and scale it up and down, you can also constrain your scale by clicking on what axis. So I see the Z axis is the one that's up and down. So if I want to move it only up and down, I'll push G to move and you see how it's moving everywhere. But the moment I press Z, it's constrained to just the Z axis. So I can just move it up and down that way. And if I wanted to move it with everything but the Z axis, I would click G and then I would click Shift Z and it will not move it up and down at all. It will only move it on the other two axes, X and Y. So for now, I'm going to use the side view. I'm going to click on my armature, which is already selected. I'm going to click G and move it into position. I'm just going to have the back of the head barely touch the top of it. And what I like to do for scale, because scaling heads is a very hard and also a very personal decision because not all heads are the exact same scale. And when you get a head, sometimes it'll be too big, too small, whatever. Basically, a head on a regular human being is going to be about the size of one fourth of this like chest area right here. So just below the belly button, about to where the hips are, if you were to scale this chest and then cut it into four, the head could kind of fit into four. And because this is a cartoon character, a lot of times it's slightly bigger than that. Obviously, this Amelia head seems to be scaled pretty exactly to the way I want it just from this Zimpia base. That works out really well for me. But if you want to scale your head up or down, the shortcut key is S. So I'm just going to click S really quick with the front view locked into place and it will scale from its origin point, which is right down here, wherever you moved it. And that's fine. You can just scale, move it up and down, make sure that the side view looks OK. I think that this looks pretty good. I will be able to tell a lot more once I've added my textures. So let's go ahead and do that just the way that we did with the body. So I'm going to click on my head and you can see right now that this is named body 001 because we already have a body. Body, so this is putting an extra number on the end of it. But this for now, I'm going to rename head because that's what this is. And you can see that this head has combined meshes. So it has four materials for one mesh. So this is the head mesh and there's eyes, piercings, face and transparent. You just click on the material that you want to edit. So I want to edit the eyes. And what I'm going to do is go down here to where the base color was, toggle that down, click open navigate to my textures folder and I'm going to add my eye texture. And let me tell you, sometimes Blender is a little bit weird about adding different textures to things. So before you go around and try and like edit all of these things down here, just make sure that all of the textures are added to all of the materials within this mesh. So piercings looks fine. And then I'm going to go to the face, which is also pink. And I'm going to go ahead and go to my base color, open that up, go into my textures, and I'm going to add this face texture that I purchased. But you can see that the eyes are still this pink color. There are sometimes issues with adding your textures to your materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of reset this entire principled BSDF. I'm going to say remove so that the surface says none. And then I'm going to go back in here and go back to BSDF. And that will pretty much reset all of these things that were set up when I imported the FBX for just this one eyes. I'm going to choose my base color as image texture. I'm going to open navigate to the file and I'm going to go down to my image texture that I have. And there you go. It is all fixed. Now there's different things that you can do down here, but when you do a brand new material, your specular is always going to be really high, which means it has like that glare on it. And I'm just going to turn that all the way down just so that I can see what I'm working with. And that's all I'm going to go into as far as materials right now. Don't worry. There's going to be another video all about materials. Now that I have my eyes, piercings and face set up, I'm going to do the last one, which is transparency. Now you can see the eyelashes are really blocky and so are the eyebrows. And this is because the transparents do not have alpha on them. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and select my base color like I would. Scroll down until I find the transparent base color, which I want black lashes and brows. There is a white option that comes with the Amelia head, but I always use the black because I am a sucker for a dark black mascara. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this for my base color. And then I am going to show you one little thing that you can do to make the alpha show up on your model because as you can see down here in the blend mode alpha blend is selected which is the correct one that's basically the same as Poyomi transparent but it's not reflecting the actual alpha in there so make sure that you're on alpha blend and what we're gonna do is under the alpha section I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this that I can show you from scratch and we are going to add an image texture that defines where the alpha map is and alpha is just opacity so if you have your opacity all the way up to one it's going to be fully opaque and if you bring it down to zero it's going to be fully transparent so we're just going to leave it at one because we are going to add an image which is a white and black image which tells the material exactly where to put the alpha so what is going to be transparent and what is not going to be transparent so I'm going to go ahead and scroll up a little bit, add an image texture. I'm going to open, navigate to my textures folder, and you can see here, this is the transparency alpha that comes with the Amelia head. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And as you can see, it's still not exactly working. This is because we need to go into the nodes, which don't freak out. It's okay. Nodes are not that scary. Basically, we're going to go into the shading tab right up here on the top. I'm going to expand this a little bit and this is just your exact same thing that you had over here in your materials. So you can see right here, there's the base color and it's attached to this image right here. You can see down here that your alpha is attached to this image right here, but we want the alpha to not be the image because this is a PNG, but it's not a see-through PNG. It is a black and white image. We want it to read the color and not the transparency of this image to translate it to the transparency of our main material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unhook the alpha from that. It's still all here and I'm going to have the alpha go to the color instead of the alpha. So the color of this PNG is going to translate to the alpha of your main material. And that's all you have to do. Just make that one change right there. And then when you go back to layout, there you go. All of your alpha is applied to your lashes and your brows. And you can see that the transparency alpha is right here, linked under your alpha. And then down here, you have alpha blend. And there you go. That's all you have to do in order to see alpha in Blender. And now we can move on. So we have our eyes, piercings, face, and transparency all set up. And you're wondering, what piercings? Well, like I said earlier about blend shapes, the Amelia head has a lot of blend shapes. And in here, they're called shape keys. So shape keys and blend shapes are the same thing. Blend shapes in Unity is the same thing as shape keys in Blender. So there's a lot of amazing shape keys that are on the Amelia head. It's one of the reasons why I use this a whole lot and so if you scroll all the way down to close to the bottom, the piercings on is at zero. But if you were to turn that blend shape all the way up to one, there you go. There's some piercings. And you can decide which piercings you want to keep. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and select her head. I'm going to hit tab to edit. And as you can see, when I hit tab, all of the piercings went away. And you're like, why is that? That's because when you have a blend shape, you need to edit on that specific blend shape, AKA shape key. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the piercings on. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the number three, which is plane select. This will select a whole plane. Hitting the number two will select an edge and hitting the number one will select a point. That's a very basic overview, but I'm going to hit three for plane select. I'm going to click on one part of the thing that I want to delete and I'm going to click L, which will select everything that's linked, L for link. So I'm going to select this because that's all linked together. I'm going to select the bar and this part. And now that that specific piece is selected, I'm going to hit X and I'm going to delete all the faces. So now I only have one eyebrow piercing and I'm going to go ahead and delete these little things as well. L to select linked, L to select linked. I'm going to go ahead and delete these bottom lip ones as well. L, L. 
and I think the top lip ones as well and then X and delete all the faces now I think I'm happy with these piercings and of course you can add other piercings on later but I just want to keep it at this so I'm going to exit my edit mode and I'm going to make sure that I turn my shape key all the way down and then once you get into unity you can have a toggle for having your piercings on or having the piercings off so I'm going to go ahead and turn this all the way down to zero there's also the option of clicking this little X button down here in the bottom corner and that will turn all of the shape keys on that selected item to zero. So once I've clicked that, all of my shape keys are back to zero. And I know that's a lot to go over and we are going to talk a lot more about shape keys in a future video. I just didn't want you to be confused about why maybe you couldn't see your piercings and you're like, what piercings are you talking about? Don't delete this material. It is important for later. So now that my head is where I want it to be and all of the textures are set up, I'm going to go ahead and merge these two armatures together and I can see here that I actually have a little gap in the back of my head. So I'm going to go ahead, select the armature for the head and I'm going to G and I'm going to move that down just a little bit and that is looking great. So make sure you have your head exactly where you want it to be and here's what we're going to do. Up here in cats where it says fixed model, when you have two armatures, you all of a sudden have a armature selection tool. So you can go down and select a different armature. Now it does get confusing at times because when you're selecting in here, these relate to the green armature. So if this was named something different, like if this was named armature one, right? And this was named armature two, the green armature is still going to have the same name. They don't have to match, which is very confusing, I know, but just make sure that when you're selecting the armature that you want to fix, that you're selecting the green name. So this little armature symbol with this little green guy right here, this is the one that you want to relate to this right here. So this is armature one with the head and I need to fix armature one. Now, when I fix anything other than the base, I usually just turn everything off because it will fix it and it will work perfectly, but it doesn't mess anything up. So I'm going to leave all of those off for the rest of the duration of making this model. I am not going to have any of these on. I'm going to say, okay, fix model. It's going to pop up with this little warning saying that the hips, the spine, all those things are not found. That is totally fine because once we merge the armatures, it's going to have all these bones anyway. This is just a non-important warning. Don't worry about it. It's not going to affect your avatar in any way. Don't freak out when you see this error. So now, even though this bone right here is the head bone and this bone right here is the head bone, we want to decide when we merge the armatures, which one is going to be the more important bone. And we're going to say the body is going to be the base. The body is always going to be the base. So when we merge this on, what we're going to do is in cats, there's a tab called custom model creation. And in here, I'm not going to join my meshes because it's the same issue as above. I want my meshes to be kept separate until I personally join them together myself and decide which ones I want joined together. I'm also going to uncheck remove zero weight bones. Do not have either of these checked. It's just not a good idea. You are going to have a check merge all bones. This means if there's two head bones, it's going to take the head bone from the base and it's going to take the head bone from the to merge armature and it's going to merge them together. So if you have a head bone on the head and a head bone on the body, it's going to merge them onto the body's head bone, this head bone right here, which is what you want. So for my base, I'm going to select armature, which right here again is this green armature right here. And then armature 001 is going to be the one that I'm going to merge to the base. And I'm going to go ahead and click merge armatures. So now, as you see, I only have one armature left and it has a body mesh and a head mesh. It did not join my meshes together. They're still separate, but I only have one armature. And as you can see, I just have one head bone. So that is the basics of creating your very first base in Blender, the materials added, and everything organized. I know this video was a lot. We went over a lot of things very lightheartedly. We didn't really go into depth on anything about materials or different things like that, but we are going to be going over materials in a future video. We're going to be going over shape keys. We're going to be adding on items that fit. We're going to be adding items on that don't fit and make them fit. So if you're interested in learning the rest of how to make your entire VR chat model in Blender just the way that you want, stay tuned for all the rest of the videos coming out in this Blender series. So until then, I love you and thank you so much for watching.